Hello, this is Christy Rubenstein from Diana T. Myers and Associates, and welcome to this video, which will provide you with a quick walkthrough of the Renewal Project Summary Form Survey that we'll be using for the ODFC Renewal Project Evaluation in 2020. So I've already got the Renewal Project Summary Form Survey open in my browser, and you can see that the first page includes some general instructions and notes. We suggest you read through these carefully to make sure you understand what the instructions are, but I'll hit a few highlights, which is that uh, number one, make sure you submit by the due date and time. Uh, two, that you can use the save and continue later button. And uh, one of the most important things about this particular survey is to note that most of the questions aren't required. Only a few are marked with the red asterisk and are required. Uh, most are optional and they're there for you to provide any uh, relevant information you think uh, is important for us to understand about your project when we're evaluating its performance. So most of it's optional. Um, again, there is no scoring this year and there will be no appeals process. Anything that you want us to know about your project, you should use this survey form to let us know. Uh, in terms of the way the survey is organized, it follows the numbering of the 2019 uh, Renewal Project Scoring Standards, which if you click on this, you'll open up uh, the scoring standards. And uh, the survey is organized really around uh, this uh, numbering and organizational system. Uh, the, there are three surveys, so just be aware that this is one of the three. Uh, and that you also need to complete the other two. And if you have any questions along the way, you can always reach out to Pam or I via the ODFC Gmail account for assistance. So if we navigate to the next screen, I've already got a version here that's filled in uh, and that opens up as, as the other surveys do as well with the project and contact information. And you should just fill this out again with the um, grant that this uh, information pertains to, and be sure to identify a contact person that we can always uh, follow up with over the next few weeks. Um, and um, we might need to reach out uh, if we have any questions, particularly uh, around the information input into the survey. So just please be sure that's somebody who's going to be available. Um, and in terms of the email address, make sure it's a correct email address. This is the email address that your copy of the survey is going to go to. Uh, the general information is required, as is the contact information. Um, these are just general um, pieces of information so that we know what project type, and is it a DV program, and um, does your agency have multiple projects. We are asking about consolidation and expansion as well. These are important pieces of information for us to know when we're evaluating the project. Uh, and then we start to get into the sections that really follow along with the scoring standards. So again, if we go back to the scoring standards, we can see that section one is data quality, two, severity of need, uh, three, performance, and so on. Uh, the survey is organized around that. And again, um, uh, you'll just have to check to see if these are required questions. Most of them are not. There are opportunities for you to provide any information that you think we might need to know in terms of why the project performed uh, in a way that maybe is not as expected. And um, that continues on with most of these in the first three sections. Now, when we get to uh, section four, we're gonna have a few required um, questions. So just be sure that you're not sort of skipping through those and that you are aware that there are gonna be some required questions interspersed throughout. So be sure to fill those in. Uh, again, we've got some required ones here around the APR submission. So just be sure that you're uh, paying attention to that and filling in that information. Otherwise, when you go to submit, you'll get an error. And then uh, again, all of these are really opportunities for you to let us know if there's anything um, that I see you missed a quarterly monitoring a submission for some reason or late, uh, you can tell us why. Um, if you um, just need to give us additional information, that's what these uh, boxes are for and really what this survey is for. Uh, when we get to section six under HUD priorities and housing first, you are gonna need to answer a few of these questions as well, they are required. And also um, uh, we have um, opportunities for you to provide information if you're not going to be following Housing First, uh, although that's a, really a requirement for the, from the COC. 
Um, the coordinated access network um, criteria, the FC CAN, uh, please be sure to uh, provide information if there's uh, anything that you think is going to show up when we do the um, look back in terms of the CAN data. If you, uh, if it's going to look like you, there was a vacancy you didn't report, please let us know. Um, any ineligible participants, again, please let us know. We uh, take the, the FC CAN uh, compliance pretty seriously. Um, so please be sure to uh, provide us with information about um, anything that's going to look unusual when we, when we do our look back. On cost effectiveness, uh, again, anything that we need to know there that you think might impact um, the cost effectiveness. Uh, I will say that the section nine is marked as required because it is required for DV projects. Um, but if, uh, if you're not a DV project, you can simply enter NA and move forward. Uh, and then uh, section 10 penalties, again, if you had HUD monitoring or are gonna su submit this information late, please uh, provide explanations. Um, around those. Uh, so again, uh, most of the boxes are optional um, and really they're there for you to provide information to us in case um, there is something unusual going on with your project that you think we should know and have on record in terms of performance. And um, you can use this survey to give us that information. And once you're done, you can just click submit and you'll get the thank you page. Uh, again, we'll note that you should get a confirmation email sent to you with a copy of your responses. If you don't, please let us know. Uh, and uh, through the Gmail account, uh, the ODFC Gmail account, and then we will be sure to follow up and make sure you get a copy for your records. Uh, again, note that this is one of three surveys. Uh, so be sure to fill out all three. And if you have any questions along the way, of course, you can reach out to Pam or I, and uh, we will um, sort of help to point you in the right direction and uh, filling out the surveys. Uh, we hope this uh, walkthrough has been helpful and uh, have a great day.